Okay, hi there, and welcome to a short revision video where we're going to make a distinction between some of the micro and macro economic effects of a sustained fall in unemployment. Unemployment has been falling quickly in many countries, including the UK, where the Labour Force survey unemployment rate is now below 4%. That said, measured unemployment remains very high in countries such as Greece, Spain, Brazil. Look at this chart, for example, Brazil unemployment, 11.4%. Italy, above 10%. France, nearly 9%. So lots of countries where unemployment remains relatively high. Our focus, however, will be countries where there's been a big fall in unemployment, including, of course, the UK. Now, in a synoptic question, you have oftentimes have to evaluate the micro and macro consequences, the impacts of this fall in unemployment. So typically, you're going to build two main points of analysis and evaluation. <clears throat> on the micro side, lots of choice. You can focus on individuals. So the impact of falling unemployment on people, on households, what happens, for example, when there's a fall in unemployment and that impacts on their, their, real, their real incomes, uh, the, the ability to repay debt, the ability to take out a loan, for example, to afford a mortgage. Another aspect you could focus on is the impact of falling unemployment on businesses, what happens to their sales, their revenue curves, can show the impact of an outward shift of revenue leading to higher profits, uh, link it to the labour market, the ability to hire skilled workers, what happens to wages and costs if unemployment falls to certain low levels, particularly if there's shortages of skilled labour. Or you could take a micro aspect and say, I'm going to focus on individual labour markets. So what is the consequence, for example, of very low unemployment for the care sector, for farming, for house building, um, particularly if you end up in a situation where there are some significant labour shortages, shortages of skilled labour. So micro is thinking about the consequences for individual people, households, businesses and markets. Macroeconomics broadens the discussion out. Saying to some students the other day, you cannot go wrong if you link something to your main macroeconomic objectives. So, unemployment is our falling variable. What are the possible connections with economic growth, for example? If there's an outward shift of aggregate demand, if AD is shifting out, what happens to employment and to the, to the number of people wanting to join the labour force, for example? There could be a connection, perhaps a trade-off, between unemployment and the trade balance. If more people are in work, spending on goods and services, that might lead to an increase in imports and perhaps a higher external deficit. The obvious macro point to make would be to make a, a connection between falling unemployment and a possible worsening trade-off with inflation. So there could be some acceleration in cost push and demand pull inflationary pressure, as predicted uh, theoretically by the Phillips curve analysis. You could even talk about the impact of falling unemployment on the government. Tax revenues coming in, uh, less welfare going out potentially, leading to an improved fiscal deficit, which we've certainly seen in the last few years, and perhaps a better ability to control the national debt. Are you happy with the synoptic division here? The, the stimulus is a fall in unemployment. Your micro focuses on individuals, markets, businesses. Uh, your macro goes to your key objectives, in this case, growth, trade, inflation, government finances. As long as you make a nice, clear, clean divide between micro and macro, you'll do well on these synoptic questions. But of course, you also need to evaluate. Let me offer you four, hopefully subtle, evaluation arguments to, to speed you along. So the impact of falling unemployment depends on the causes of the decline in joblessness. Is it a, is it a, a welcome structural improvement in the labour market? bringing down long-term unemployment, bringing down occupational immobility? Or is it just a cyclical rebound in output and jobs following a recession? The impact depends on whether more people in work also means that, that the wages people are getting, the incomes after inflation, are rising. Yes, unemployment is low. It's below 4% of the labour force. Yet, we've also seen an increase in working poverty and household debt. Working poverty is the number of people who, who are in work, they have a job, 
but the earnings from that job is less than 60% of median household income. Third evaluation point, the impact on inflation depends on the estimated non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, the so-called NIRU. And that depends on the flexibility of the labour market. It also depends on the relative bargaining power, the relative bargaining power between employers and employees. So we've seen a big fall in union membership now. We've seen the emergence of monopsony employers, dominant employers. Has that improved the trade-off between unemployment and inflation? And the last point I want to make in this video is that the, the question is about falling unemployment in a sense at a national level. But of course, that's a big number. Let's say 4% of the labour force. That can hide, in fact, it does hide big, significant differences when we disaggregate. So youth unemployment remains at 12%. There are significant regional differences in employment. And of course, there are deep rooted, embedded pockets of very high local unemployment and poverty. The picture we have on this slide is the beach at Redcar from a recent superb Guardian article, which has been looking at the impact of the closure of the steelworks, the Redcar steelworks, which you can see at the top of the picture there. <clears throat> the impact on the local economy in terms of long-term unemployment and negative multiplier effects has been pretty dramatic. You know, this is happening now, even though the rate of unemployment in the UK is less than 4%. So the big number hides some significant detail and the top students are aware of that detail and bring that into their discussion. So there we go, a quick synoptic video on some of the micro and macro impacts of a fall in unemployment.